Hey, what's up? This is Hyun Suk Yoon, and welcome back to the SCIR model tutorial with Numerous Model Builder. In this tutorial, uh, we're gonna learn how to use Nether Meat fitting tools to find the optimal parameters in the SCIV discrete model that best fits the incidence data. Um, parameter fitting is a very common practice in the model world to figure out how our data is related to our model. So this is gonna be a very essential skill that you will wanna learn. All right, now let's go to Numerous. Uh, here we have a discrete SCIV model that we saw in video five, but with some additional components. Uh, let's look at it one by one. So first terms, I'm just gonna go one by one and show you the values here by clicking each of them. So sigma and gamma is period, and period is another parameter in the parameter set. So check that in mind. So these are all the parameters that are in the set. So make sure you add these two and the values can be 0, 0.0 for now. And the parameters in the parameter set are the parameters that are gonna be optimized later. So keep that in mind as well. So just gonna go through all of them. And also note that beta is now a function of time uh, because the effective contact rate usually reduces as animals or people can adapt to avoid getting exposed to different, get it, they, get, they can adapt to avoid getting exposed to being infected as epidemic spread. Yep. All right, now next are stocks and flows. So SEIV have the same equations as last time. And now this I data is new though, and it's, a, it's an incidence data. So the array here is infected individuals in each time step. And this data string is actually the Sierra Leone 2014 Ebola incidence data. So I'm just gonna scroll through the array in case you're interested in copying them down to do what I'm doing right now. And just gonna Yep, so you can copy these down. And now the error it fit is either the least square error or the maximum likelihood error, depending on the index toggles which we have right here. So this is the if statement. And so once we click launch, on the dashboard we're gonna see a switch where we can decide the model to run under maximum likelihood or least square and this is the toggle. And so let's go ahead and launch. And we, set, we see four stuff here. Hold up. Um, all right, so four stuff. A table of all the variables. Uh, we have a incidence graph, the population of infected, um, error plot graph, and we have beta time. So, all right, now on the side of it, we have an optimizers tab. And I already set up four optimizers and this is how it looks like when I click on it. So here if you click on each one, there is minimum and maximum bound and guess one and two. And guess one and two are the initial values that are needed for Nelder and Meet optimization. And if you're not familiar with another meet, I suggest you look it up. And then for uh, for minimize expression, uh, this is for minimize expression. This is um, we set how many data points we want the parameter to optimize to. So here we have 60 data points. So I put 60, but say if you want it to 30, it will optimize to the first 30 data points. And tolerance value is a specified value that tells the optimizer to stop the search when the difference in successive values of the objective function is smaller than the value. All right, now we are ready to run, run the optimizer. So we click run and it starts to search for the optimal set of parameter values. All right, once it's done, 
You can either reset to run it again or accept the values and the optimized values will be the new values for these parameters. So let's suppose that we like the values, so we accept it and exit out and run the model. And here we see that the model simulation is fitted to the data pretty nicely. And let's try a few other alternatives just to show you what it's like. And let's try a different number here and put 30 and run it. Okay, now when we run, we're going to accept and run. Now when we run, we see that the, that the simulation only fits well to the first 30 points and the rest of them doesn't really fit, fit nicely to the data curve. Alright, so that's it. This concludes the tutorial and I hope you enjoyed learning how to use Numerous Model Builder. It's an incredible tool to analyze model simulation with ease and I hope you get to use it for your, many of your future projects. Um, thank you so much for tuning in and this is Chen Sok Yoon signing off.